Hey, in this video we're going to cover some basic things you need to think about when choosing your first drone. And some things that I found complicated when I started in the, this hobby. The first topic I want to talk about is the... You are greeted with a lot of different acronyms when you are trying to order your first drone. And you can see different types of acronyms like RTF, uh, PMP, BNF, ARF, and so on. And sometimes KIT. And we're going to cover the pros and cons of the different models. There's drones that's better suited for aerial photography. And you have the FPV or freestyle drones that are more agile and fast. And I'll give some examples of the different types of drones on each of the different types of builds. Okay, so we'll start off with the RTF version. Uh, the RTF is stands for ready to fly, which means that you get a complete drone with a remote and everything, and you can just charge up the batteries and off you go. The most common drone of this type it must be the DJI Phantom, but there's also freestyle uh, versions such as the Ishini FPV Racer or whatever it's called. It sucks anyway, so don't buy that. I, I, had, I had fun with these. We couldn't stop smiling. I think it was mostly because we were semi out of control the entire time. The pros of the RTF models are often that, well, it's ready to fly, so you can just charge up and uh, off you go. Doesn't need much time uh, to get into. Often they're pretty easy to fly uh, with the GPS and whatnot. And the cons of the RTF models are, well, you don't know the model, uh, you haven't built it, so if something happens, a motor goes bad or whatever, you won't probably be able to fix it. You have to leave it for repairs or whatever. I personally like to fix all, be able to fix all my models because, well, you crash and shit happens. Sure, I personally, I want, uh, I want a uh, Phantom 4, but, well, I don't have the cash, but... Man, you got these bad things. Sorry, bro, I'm all out, man. Man, I got these cheeseburgers, man. I don't want any cheeseburgers. Please, man. Another con with the RTF models is that some models you can't change some things. For example, the Phantom, uh, you have a specific LiPo battery that's designed for that drone. Sure, you get more efficiency of that battery for that drone, but they come with a price tag and LiPo batteries from for example Hobby King or whatever, they're often cheaper. So you can buy a lot more if you build your own version. Okay, so moving on. BNF, which stands for Bind and Fly. This type of kit, you don't get a remote with the kit. Uh, you get a receiver, uh, which... So basically the only thing you need to do is if you have an, a radio, you just bind to that, that model. You have to make sure that you have a compatible radio with the receiver that's on the craft. Because, well, they ship with different types of model. And we're going to make a video of what to think about when choosing your first radio later. So if you're ordering a BNF version, make sure that you have the right brand on the receiver that comes with the model and for your radio. Well, I bought the Ishini X73 uh, micro drone, uh, which has the FR Sky uh, receiver on it. So I can bind my Tyrannus to that uh, model. So look that up. 
I personally haven't seen any aerial photography drones that's BNF. Uh, if you guys heard of any, please let me know in the comments below. The pros of the BNF versions is, well, you don't need to build it. You basically have a ready model. The only thing you need to do is bind to it, which basically means that it's the same as the RTF model, but you have your own radio. But the same cons anyway, because you don't know the model, you uh, don't know how it's built, and you probably don't know how to fix it. Okay, so the next version we're going to talk about is the PMP, which stands for Plug and Play. Let's plug it in. It's going to say, hey, I see you plugged in a new device and it's going to load in the appropriate drivers. You'll notice that this scanner build... Whoa. This version doesn't come with a receiver or a radio. So this is basically the same as the BNF version. The only difference is that it doesn't come with a receiver and you can then, if you have a receiver and a radio, you just plug that in and you're ready good to go. Same pros and cons basically as this, the other models. The only pro that I can think about is that, well, you don't need a specific radio or to handle that model. You can choose whatever you like. Okay, so the last type of kit, if you like, uh, we're going to cover is the ARF version. ARF stands for Almost Ready to Fly. And these versions often come in parts, so you have to solder and you have to uh, look up that all the wires are co connected correctly and you have to build it yourself. This is for the people that like to build their own drone but don't want the hassle of researching which motor you need, which ESCs you need, which flight controller and whatnot. They just want a ready model, but they want to build it as well. The pros of this is often that you can change out components from the drone. If you don't like the flight controller, well, just change it later. Um, it's, all, it's a fast way to get into the build part of the hobby. Cons regarding the ARF versions. They often come with pretty cheap quality. They often come with underpowered motors, shitty flight controllers and whatnot, but sure, there are some great ARF versions out there, but instead of going for the ARF version, Consider going for the do-it-yourself route and research and you get better performance for less money. And lastly, we have the do-it-yourself route. Which you're going to spend a lot of time researching for the best motors, the best ECs, the best frames and whatnot. And it can get a bit expensive in the long run before, because, well, you're always looking to upgrade your model. And the pros of the do-it-yourself route is, well, you, all, you know all the components that in, is in your drone. Uh, you know how to repair it. You know which comp component to change out or what brand it is and whatnot. So there's a big pro on this. The cons is that you have to spend a lot of hours comparing motors and re reading up on stuff just to know which is best for me. And uh, well, that can be a bit of a hassle, but that's a big part of the hobby, at least for me, building and researching and gaining knowledge. And that's why I'm doing this for you, because I want to make this a bit easier for you to make your choice, because I had no one. I had to research all, all things myself, and so which drone do I recommend buying as your first drone? Well, it's this, the Hubson X4. Uh, this is a great micro drone. This helped me to understand how to fly in the beginning. And the most common problem 
when flying a drone is that you lose orientation of which is forward and forwards and back. Sure, you can go out and buy a DJI Phantom for your first drone, but what if the GPS has a hiccup and it flies away? and you've never flown a drone before, how are you able to safely get it back and land? And one of the bigger problems is that the DJI Phantom is a big drone and that can hurt someone if it falls from the sky and if or if you don't know what you're doing. So my recommendations to all new to the RC hobby is getting a micro drone. The Hubson X4 is a great drone. It's a great and stable drone and I've heard a lot of people complaining about that the drone drifts. Well, all drones drift a little bit, but when you have a GPS on it, it drifts less. But that's the whole point. You have to learn how to correct those little drifts or mistakes before you can fly the bigger, the bigger ones. So my recommendations is buying a small toy graded drone for your first drone and after that you're hopefully stuck in this hobby and uh, well you can choose whatever you like after that. That's my recommendations anyway. And as always thanks for watching. Bye for now.